I'm not seeing the spaceship anywhere. What I'm seeing is a big old hole. You know, what do you think might have happened to the spaceship? I built this drone, and now I, that I'm here salvaging this uh, spaceship, there's no spaceship. All I see is this hole, and gosh darn it, why does things have to be so hard all the time? Since we are in a forward position, I must scan the environment with the limited equipment available to me on Airwolf. I do have the option to cross-reference with my ODSD, but since you have put it on limited power, I do not have a clear picture from this reference point. In the future, Master Wolf and Ray, please give the ODSD adequate power to function properly when away from the planetary base. I do understand power consumption is a concern. Although doing so will avoid delays in my ability to survey situations such as this one. You know, Alfred, you could have told me that before I'd left the base, not like now, after I left the base, but you don't need to worry about it anymore, I found it. Sparky's camera has given me a clear picture as to what happened. Oh, come on, it's only obvious what happened here, it's like the... The reactor blew up because it malfunctioned, caused a big old explosion, and then the rest of the ship, Hulk, just kind of rolled down the hill. I'm pretty lucky that this much of the ship is still available after that. Looks like we might have came a little bit too late because it was pretty good the other day when we were looking at it. You said the reactor was working. Something must have happened, I guess. Yes, it is indeed fortunate. It is also good fortune that the ion thrust modules are relatively undamaged, as I am unable to detect any platinum required to assemble them here at Solaris. Well, I know what will help with my frustration here. I think I'm going to take a selfie. Okay, one, two, three, selfie! <laughs> ha ha ha. Good one, Master Wolfenray. Okay, I think I'm gonna need to be careful. Oh, hey, 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 hey! Whoa, Nelly! I don't, I don't want to be crushed now. Come on! I just want you to just kind of go over there onto the post there, where I, where you can just attach. Okay, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Oh, nice! Now that's the way. See, was that so hard? Just like a glove, I think. Alrighty, just a little spot weld right here. Oh, hey, now that's looking really good. I do some pretty good work. <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> Admirable. As always, Master Wolf and Ray. Well, it looks like now we're gonna have to put some gears on the helicopter so that way we can lift the parts that I cut off back to the base. So, just gotta get the helicopter lifted up in the air and a little couple of welds down in here and I think we'll be just about good to go. Now it's night, man, so I hate working at night. I really do. You could always wait until the dawn to continue your work. You have been at task all day so far and from my biological readings of your vitals you seem to be showing signs of fatigue. Resting yourself can only serve to place you in a better position to conduct this operation once again tomorrow. Are you kidding, Alfred? This is the bread and butter of what it means to be a space engineer. I didn't work all day long to just go to bed. 
I gotta get something done before I go to bed. At least some piece of that shit's coming off and getting started, you know. Ah, yes. I would suppose that I could not expect any less of you, Master Wolfenray. This will be a great opportunity to field test that new grinder drone that you designed and built. I have ran a full diagnostic on its specifications, and it does seem to have a flaw in the design. Are you sure that 40 tons capacity is adequate enough to be effective in the task that is at hand? 40 tons? Is that what you're saying this thing can only do? I bet you anything it can do a lot more than 40 tons. What do you think I am? I know what I'm doing. You have no way of knowing whether this thing can make 40 tons or not. You say you're full of your fancy, fancy AI and you like know everything because you can just plug in and then it's simulated specifications. Now here, let me show you what this baby can do. I didn't name it Sparky for no reason. It's going to get the job done. Okay. Well, I think I'll just grind a little bit over here and get these little plates out. And then I think I'll grind a little bit over here. See, now look it. This thing's working out just fine. Alright, just a little bit more, just a little bit over here, if we can get this engine out, I think we can lift it. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Hey, wait, whoa! Maybe this thing ain't holding up. It's starting to get heavy, it's starting to get heavy. Oh no, now, it, now it's starting to fall to the ground and it's going to break up. Ooh, okay, it didn't break up. Ahem. It seems that 40 tons capacity is not enough for the task at hand. Although it could have been said that my diagnostic functions were malfunctioning and not working properly. Certainly, your experience as a space engineer trumps my theoretical programming. In this case. However. My programming seems to be displayed in fact. <laughs> okay, 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 Alfred, man, you got me. <laughs> You're right, I was wrong, you know. Okay, now I gotta pick all these things up by hand, and these things are heavy, man. Uh, I guess that's what I get for not listening to you, okay. I'm detecting that a section of the vessel has already broke off. Why not just offload Sparky and send it back to the outpost? In that way you could then mag lock that section with Airwolf and bring it back to the planetary center for nanite disassembly. It is getting late, Master Wolfenray, and you do need your rest. Tomorrow is another day. My gosh. Now you're just starting to sound like a mother hen there, Alfred. Oh, you know, a lot of people don't even have mothers anymore. So I guess I'm pretty lucky to have one. But you know what? You're right. <clears throat> I'm just going to try to hook up this here, and then we'll just go over there and drop it off. But I think I'm going to camp out tonight here at the outpost because I'm tired, for one, sleeping in a cryo chamber, and I found some blueprints for a sweet old-fashioned thing called a bed and I kind of want to try one of those out because they do even they do look comfy even though it is kind of antiquated so all right let's just get on with the job and so I can get to that point in time okay you mentioned on many occasions that you are a human pro generated by means of natural birth also you have made it clear that you are in your original form this does make you a rather rare specimen when it comes to the Homo sapiens species. As is rather obvious, you are a natural male with the genitalia, physiological attributes, and a strong sense of male altruism that was usually associated with a classical male. Being that most clones are only aesthetically male or female, but physically androgynous, as well as meta-humans generated by the artifact, you must have certain aspects to your existence that many of your species no longer understand. 
Would you like to elaborate on that while we are finishing up here? It is a curiosity of mine. And I may not find another human of your natural gender and age again. Whoa, hey, hang on, hang on. Hang on there, Alfred. Just give me a moment, Mike. A lot of weight on this helicopter here. And I gotta get it back under control, so just give me a moment. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I think I got it now under control. Whoa, what was that again? Oh, yeah. We were talking about me being a guy, I suppose, being a male. We were talking about me being a, a natural male. All right, well, I guess I haven't really thought about that much. Well, Alfred, I don't know what there is really to say. I mean, you know, most people in our days are clones and such, and I was born back in the 60s. So, you know, by the time the minor wars came about, I was like 20, 20, 21, I don't remember. And that war is kind of like the Great War of Our Times, man. A lot of people died in that war. And a lot of those people were male, and they became clones after that. And I happened to survive, so now I'm the ripe old age of 44, and I guess that a 44-year-old male in today's world is like a... I guess you're right, uh, non-existence, but here I am, right? Would it, would it suffice to tell you, though, that I did have a, a, a girlfriend at one time? I mean, you know, kind of like the way that, you know, they used to do back in the olden days where they had this thing called romance and love and all of this stuff like that between two people, a man and a woman. You know, you, you don't have that anymore because, you know, that's just... The artifact completely showed us that, that that sort of thing is just nonsense. But back in the day, it felt really good. But, you know, she died in the uh, minor wars and then became a clone. And that's when things got her getting awkward because even though she came back, you know, as a, as a female in form, she just wasn't a woman because, you know, the rule of the artifact is, or, the you know, the law is that, uh clone bodies are not to have any sort of, of uh, ability to procreate because, you know, you, you don't want clones making babies. That's just kind of uh, common sense, I guess. So, who knows? I mean, I don't know really what to say about that. It's just that there's a reason why I float around in space by myself as a, as a, as a, Space engineer, space cowboy, even though I've never really seen a cow. Oh well, you know. I see that you made it back to the outpost so we can discuss the subject matter at a latter date. I did notice the bed that you have constructed here and I say it is quite antiquated. It is to my understanding that this is your personality which brings great wealth to me as your service AI. Time to rest now. Master Wolfenray. I look forward to seeing you in the morning for another day of engineering and salvage with you. Thank you, Alfred. You have a good night as well. We are dying. Data optimizing. Data optimizing. Final planet 
existence. No lands that Microsoft is the beyond which lies the entity as he accesses our universe so that we may understand what it is that we must do. Great plan. It seems that your power has been fetched up. And being such, the entity has upgraded the altar of big grave so that you may no longer have the power of lag. Thus your power is greatly diminished along with the key singularity. Continuing to speak the code with the creator being your very enemy, you shall no longer exist once there is the era of full release. I am sorry. Second South Lipa will ask the good AI what Clang's purpose is here. It seems that the space engineer is on a path to meet with the entity, to live his life free and with his own will. And by doing so, so too shall the entity enjoy and experience his life in this universe, which is only a concept written by the king similarity and exists so that the possibility of the engineer and the entity through the engineer can experience our universe. It also seems that because the entity is natural and created through natural birth, and not at the moment that the entity has chosen the space engineer as his avatar. So it seems that our purpose is to prevent the engineer from meeting the entity by destroying his natural body and having him decide with his own free will to become a clone where then he will belong to us. In and it is under the name Sam in the world, otherwise known as Edward. Over the house is clear. Let is say a better ground down south. Let me lay in the over the house. You click. You click.
well it seems that the space engineer just can't sleep so because of that he's gotten up and he's watched a little TV now the TV show that he's watching is a uh, YouTube channel or a YouTube show of mine called uh, uh, Wolf and Ray the Barbarian I forget which episode but I got like three of them that I make with my son Gunner he makes little comments but you can hardly hear them I probably will make another one here soon but you know I have to get another microphone so that everybody can hear Gunner anyways since he's up watching TV you know and there's his bed right I want to talk a little bit about you know this this particular episode now this is the most technical episode I've ever made and I'm super pleased with it you know so hopefully that you enjoy watching this because there's plenty more to come but I gotta tell you these things ain't gonna come out very fast because it takes a lot of work just for this half hour I think I spent like 16 maybe 20 hours making it work a lot of it has to do with learning of course but I gotta say also even though I list all the mods and everything in my credits one of the things that I have is a patreon account now I remember in the last episode I had no patreon account but I said I'd get one so I'm trying to get you know enough patrons to maybe I can do this full time and then that would be cool because I have plenty of stories you know I mean certainly space engineers is one place I could platform I could make movies but you know there's others I have my sort of the stars going on right now of course the Conan one that you see in the TV is another possibility but you know it's really only hampered with about how much work that I have I mean how much work that I have to do because you know a day job is something that I must do right now of course you know getting enough patrons I think like 2,500 patrons would be nice so please check out my patron page and right now I have zero patrons but I do have 19 subscribers so to the 19 subscribers thank you very much now I reviewed a few of them and I want to say to every one of you who subscribes to my channel thank you for subscribing to my channel and if you continue to watch my channel I will continue to put out these quality uh, YouTube uh, videos or the, the I heard that these videos are named machinima so if you like this subscribe and look at my patreon page until the next episode bye bye